Have you been struggling or feeling really frustrated trying to memorize all the notes on the fretboard? Maybe you know the notes up to the fifth fret or the seventh, but once you get to the higher part of the neck, you just lose it and you get lost very easily. So today I'd like to show you a couple tips and one primary method that I really wish somebody would have showed me when I just started learning guitar. It will definitely help you demystify the upper half of the fretboard, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. David Cherboga here with this week's guitar tip of the week. Okay, first off, let's get some of the basics out of the way. You wanna make sure that you have all six strings memorized like the back of your hand. So we have E, A, D, G, B, E. Don't try to learn every single note on the fretboard all at once. That's just gonna to be too overwhelming for your brain and it's not a great method to memorize things. Now let's get to the primary method that I really like to work with. This works great with a ton of my beginner students. Now I like to use the musical alphabet from A to G, just the natural stops, no sharps, no flats. We're gonna start off with just A to begin with. Now we're gonna just go down the strings and look for that one note on each string. So we're gonna start off with the sixth string and the A is on the fifth fret. Now we're gonna go to the fifth string. A is gonna be on the open or 12. We're gonna go down to the fourth string. We have A on the seventh fret. Now we're gonna go down to the third string. A is on the second fret. We're gonna go to the next string. A is on the 10th fret. Then we're gonna go down to the last one and A is on the fifth fret just as you would find it on the sixth string since they're just different uh, octaves. So that's always an easy one between the sixth string and the first string. Now for time's sake, I'm not gonna go through the rest of the notes, but you would basically just do the same exact thing with B, C, D, E, F, G. So just like I mentioned earlier, don't try to do all the notes all at once because then you're not gonna really memorize everything. It's just gonna be too much for your brain. Take one note at a time, work one note down all the strings. Maybe you need to do this for a week until it really gets ingrained in you then start adding the next note, the next note. So it's different with everybody. You might need a couple days, somebody else might need a week. After you get somewhat comfortable with all the notes going down all the strings, the next step to add a little bit more difficulty and to ingrain them a little bit more in your brain would be to use a metronome. So by using a metronome, it forces you to look for the note without hesitation and makes your brain act a little quicker with a deadline. So you wanna start off with a tempo that's really slow, something that you can handle. You wanna make it into a game. You don't wanna miss your mark. So for example, if I was to set the metronome at 50 BPM, it would look something like this. So I challenge you to try this every day for at least 10 minutes right before your practice routine or as you're starting and warming up. Give it the 30 day challenge. Those notes are going to start sinking into your head and before you know it, you'll be able to jump into the upper frets, find all your notes. The second step or tip would be start off with certain landmarks of the guitar. Now some guitars have dots on the fretboard, which you'll see on the third fret, on the fifth fret, on the seventh, ninth, and twelfth fret. But if they don't, just go by that same rule. So if we're working with the sixth string, we wanna memorize the string name first. We have E. We're gonna to go to the third fret. We have G. Fifth fret, A. Seventh fret, B. We're gonna to jump to the tenth fret. We have D. And then we have the 12th is the same thing as the open, so we have E again. Something that I forgot to mention is that if you go by the landmarks I mentioned of the 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, and 12th fret, you're gonna run into a few spots where you have some sharper flat notes that fall in between the natural notes. For example, if you're on the G string, the 3rd string, on the 3rd fret, you're gonna have what's called an A sharp or a B flat since it falls in between those two natural notes. That's one of the reasons that I choose the 10th fret over the 9th fret for a landmark since they're all natural notes in that position. Keep in mind that this method serves as quick landmarks for our brain to reference, which makes it easier to memorize. If you got some value out of this lesson, please don't forget to hit the like button. I would truly appreciate it. As always, I'd love to hear from you guys, so let me know what worked, what didn't work. And if you have any suggestions for any future lessons and tutorials, I'd also love to hear. All right, guys, take care.